day through a Sunday um, up at this big like yogi estate here in northern Pennsylvania. Um, and essentially, it's just a good time. But what I really like about this particular retreat is that we get to learn um, and talk to yogis who practice um, like a more traditional style of yoga than what we do. So, you know, yoga has been around for thousands and thousands of years in many different iterations. And essentially what's occurred is that from these like main yoga sutras, that's kind of like, I don't know, the main book of yoga. It's where it kind of all came from. Um, from those yoga sutras, a lot of different styles have emerged out of that. You've got Hatha, you've got Ashtanga, you've got lots of different traditional versions of yoga. And essentially, these teachings came together in some other different ways and created our more modern style of yoga as well. So not only do you get to learn about that, you'll learn how those um, books and those principles came together to create what we practice here in every single class. So it's just an awesome way to get to know um, more about like the lineage of yoga. And by the way, it's a lot of fun. Don't worry, we're not gonna sit around and just talk about yoga all day long. We practice a little bit and most of the time we're hanging out, relaxing. This is a wellness retreat. So don't worry, it's not yoga all day, every day, but it is a lot of it. <laughs> all right, are you ready? Let's move. Child's pose. Take your knees out wide, toes together, fingertips up to the top of your mat. <sighs> Integration, this first sequence. Start to look to your breath. Building it right here, creating your ujjayi breath by taking a nice deep inhale. Think about pressing your belly out as you breathe in. And then exhale, hug your belly in. Inhale, expand your rib cage out, press the belly out. And on your exhale, everything contracts and comes back in. Keep moving with this breath. Really look to over exaggerate your breath today. See how much you can fill up. Big breaths in where you're expanding all the way out. And then on your exhales, contracting all the way in, pressing all of the breath out. Big inhale. Full exhale. One more time. In. Out. Inhale, come to downward facing dog. Take any movements that you'd like to. Keep moving with your breath. Inhale, pressing your belly out. Exhale and hugging your belly back in. Two more times. Big inhale, filling up. Exhale, press all the air back out. One more time. Inhale, fill. Exhale, press. Walk your feet up to your hands. Take a halfway lift, letting your belly press out. Exhale, hug your core up and in. Inhale, press out. Exhale, hug your core up and in. This breath is really the key to creating a strong core all throughout the practice. One more time, big inhale. Press all of that air out. Ragdoll, let your head drop down. Now you can take the time to sway right and left. I love getting my side bodies to start stretching here at the beginning of class. Get all the space that you want to create. Press your heels down into the ground. Zip up your legs, roll all the way up to standing. Yes, extended mountain. Bring your hands down to heart center. So you probably know by this point, we start class with three ohms. What I want you to pay attention to is on your ohms, hugging your belly in, like using the belly contraction to control how much sound and how much breath is emanating as you ohm. Take a big breath in. Oh.
Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold. Halfway lift. Inhale. Chaturanga on your exhale. Make sure you're hugging your belly in as you lower. Inhale, upward facing dog. And exhale, down dog. Take two breaths here. One more time. Inhale. Exhale. Move feet to hands. Halfway lift. Forward fold. Extended mountain. Breathe in. Fold and breathe out. Halfway lift. Chaturanga. Upward facing dog. Into down dog. Two breaths here. Look to soften your knees. Yeah, that's it, Sarah. A little bit more bend there. Good job. One more time with the breath in. Exhale. Let's move. Feet to hands. Halfway lift. Forward fold. Extended mountain. Wait for the pause in your breath. Fold. Pause. Halfway lift. Pause. Chaturanga. Up dog on your inhale. Down dog. Exhale. Build the breath. Looking for the space between your inhales and between your exhales. Yes, that's it. Breathe in. Breathe out. Feet to hands. Halfway lift. Inhale. Forward fold. Extended mountain. Eyes to the ceiling. Exhale, fold. Halfway lift. Chaturanga. Up dog when you breathe in and down dog on your exhale. That's it. Start thinking about pressing your sits bones up and back towards the far side of your mat. Yeah, that's a perfect adjustment there, Angela. Good job. Breathe in. Breathe out on empty. Move. Halfway lift. Forward fold. Extended mountain. Last one. Fold. Halfway lift, chaturanga, upward facing dog, and into downward facing dog. Two breaths here, and we'll move through our sunbees. Here you go. Deep breath in. Bend your knees. Exhale. Hop. Halfway lift, forward fold. Chair pulse. One breath in. Fold. Halfway lift, chaturanga, moving with the breath. Upward facing dog on your inhale, down dog, exhale. Right side, warrior one. Inhale as you go up, exhale and hands back down. Upward facing dog, down dog, left side, warrior one. Flow with your breath, inhale on the way up. Exhale on your way back down. Upward facing dog. And through to downward facing dog. Yeah, that's it, Carolyn. Take two big breaths here. Yeah, Ariana, really seeing if you can press your sits bones backwards. That's it. Bending your knees a little bit there. All right, let's move. Halfway lift. Forward fold. Chair pulse. One breath in. Fold. Halfway lift. Chaturanga. Up dog. Downward facing dog. Right side, warrior one. Inhale, reach. Exhale, hands back down to the mat. Upward facing dog. Through to down dog. Take left side, warrior one. Press through the back side of your back foot. Chaturanga. Upward facing dog. And through to downward facing dog. Start to let your pointer fingers melt down into the mat. Yeah, just like that, Nancy. Pressing through your pointer finger and then pressing down through your thumb as well. Good job. One more breath, everyone. In and out. Feet to hands. Halfway lift. Fold. Chair pose. Big breath in. 
fold. Halfway lift, chaturanga. Upward facing dog when you breathe in. Down dog, exhale. Take right side, warrior one. Inhale, exhale and back down. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog, left side, warrior one. Press through your big toes. Chaturanga. Upward facing dog. And into downward facing dog. That's it. You can take a sigh. Make some big breath here. One more time. Take an inhale. Blow the air out. Move. This will be our last one. Halfway lift. Fold. Chair pose. Shoulders back. Fold. Halfway lift. Chaturanga. Up dog. Down dog. Right side, warrior one. Big toe down. Chaturanga. Upward facing dog. Through downward facing dog. Left side, warrior one. Shoulders back. Chaturanga. Upward facing dog. And through to down dog. That's it. Take the breaths that you need to. Reach your right leg up into the air. Kick your heel as high as it'll go. Yes, that's it, Angela. Now bend your top knee and open your hip towards the right side of your mat. That's it. I like to picture pressing my knee up as far as it'll go, up and back. Now from here, you get to choose to stay here in three-legged or flip dog. That's it. Now organize your feet so both are facing 12 o'clock. That's it. Both together and now breathe. See if you can bring a little bit of softness to your bottom elbow. I know that's hard to say sometimes. Yes, you have this in your last breath. Come back over, high plank, and through to side plank. Right hand down, left hand straight up towards the ceiling. Hug your front ribs together and now lift the front of your pelvis up towards your belly button. It's going to feel like you're tucking your butt underneath of yourself. That's it. One more big breath in. Exhale, both hands down. Upward facing dog. And through to downward facing dog. Yes. Let's move left leg up into the air. Oh, nice, Nancy. Purple water bottle, purple shirt, and a purple block too. Here we go. Bend your top knee and then open up your hip. Listen, I'm always impressed by anybody who can get their yoga set to match. Are you ready? Flip dog. Now here you go. Press your heels down into the mat and lift all of your toes up. Focus on the foundation of this pose coming from the four corners of your feet, pressing your big toes down and even your pinky toes so that you can lift your hips one inch higher. Yes. All right. Back over. High plank and into side plank. Now let's focus on those hips again. See if you can reach them one inch further up towards the ceiling. Yes, that goes for you, Philomena, at home too. Lisa and Minnie, I can't see you, but I know you're lifting your hips up. One more inch, inhale, chaturanga on your exhale. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Take a breath or some water and sigh it out. One more time, inhale to sigh on your exhale, take right side crescent lunge. That's it, long stance, engaging your back foot. Yeah, so you're looking to get your heel right on top of your toes. Yeah, yeah, I'm coming for this back foot, Sarah, don't worry. So press through your heel. Yeah, you can bring it up even further. There you go. Now, Press like you're reaching this top thigh up towards the ceiling. That's it. Now reach your fingertips up and look up. You've got this two breaths here. And out one more time. Big breath in. Let it go. Bring your hands to heart center and twist to the right. That's it. Keeping this back leg super active. I fall over, by the way, in crescent lunge almost every single time. So don't feel bad if that's you too. Now open up your arms. 
Yeah, that's it. Reaching this top hand up as high as it'll go. Two breaths here. One big inhale, full exhale. Last one. And on your breath out, inhale, rise up. Take crescent lunge over into warrior two. Now, in the next pose, I'm going to teach you my favorite trick to not do extended side angle. Are you ready? Extended side angle. Now, this is it. You got to get low into this lunge because what you're going to look for is the half or full bind. You're going to say, but Ruby, that makes this crescent lunge harder. Don't worry. You have to do the harder thing for one second so that you can get to what's easier. See if you can wrap that bottom arm under to meet your top fingertips. Yeah, Carolyn, you've got it. Reaching that hand under. Good job. There we go. Now, everybody, bring your back foot up to match your front foot. So already we're out of this lunge. Oh, yeah, there you go. So once you're here, you're going to press through your left foot, hug your ribs in, see if you can lift up for Bird of Paradise. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And by the way, I do this because I hate extended side angle at a certain point. Sometimes I'm tired. That's it. Now flex that raised foot. Yes, there you go. All right, bring your legs back down. Reach your foot back, extended side angle, and then we'll go to Chaturanga. See, I know that you have to do something harder to get out of extended side angle. Upward facing dog on your inhale. Down dog on your exhale. That's it. Big breath in. Shake your legs out on the exhale. One more time. Inhale. Let it go. Exhale. Take left side. Crescent lunge. That's it. Now we're looking for full engagement of your back leg. Nancy, here you go. Get even lower into this big toe. Now I want you to think about this pinky toe pressing down into the mat. Lift this heel even further. Yeah, see if you can bring it up just a little bit higher. Now reach your fingertips up to the ceiling. You've got this. Engaging your back leg so this thigh is reaching towards the ceiling. Good job. Take two breaths here. And let it go. One more time. Bring your hands to heart center. And then you'll twist to the left. Yeah, that's it. Keeping the back leg super active here. In this twist, your back leg being active is the only thing that's going to keep this right hip up. So just like that, engaging. That's a good job, Angela. Two breaths. And out. One more time. Inhale. Full exhale. Breathe in. Rise up. Take crescent lunge. Oh, yes. Warrior two. Are you ready? Get as low as you can in the lunge. Setting it up here is what's going to make the next pose easier. So extended side angle. Now look to wrap the top arm back behind you and see if you can meet it with the bottom arm. If that's not possible for you, a strap is always an excellent tool to use here. Yes, that's it. Now, for those of you who want to come into Bird of Paradise and get out of this lunge, bring your right foot up to mat to your left. Yes, there you go. And then lift your left foot into the air. And I know that's easier said than done. There you go. Wrapping your right older shoulder backwards. All right. Bring this foot back down. Back foot back. We're going to chaturanga. Bring it back down to the mat, however you want to get there. Good job, guys. Upward facing dog. I love the challenge in the morning. Downward facing dog. <laughs> That's it. Take a breath in. Let it go. And move your feet up to your hands. Halfway lift. Forward fold. Take chair pulse. That's it. Sitting as low as you can go in your hips. Nice job. Hug your front ribs into center. Now bring your hands to heart center and twist to the right. I love to think about keeping my hips lower than my heart here. Nice job. Sitting down as far as you can go. Now, Carolyn, think about these left side ribs. You want to breathe like you're expanding them. Yeah, there you go. Keeping your hip long and then reaching through this top shoulder. Nice job. Take a big breath in. Let it go. And on your inhale, rise up. Take chair pulse. 
All right, and fold. You can bring your feet out to the edges of the mat. Point your fingers around your big toes and let your head drop down. Big full breaths. Let your head drop. When you're ready, let's take chair pose round two. Heels in towards center, sitting as low as you can go in your hips. That's it. Reach your fingertips up. Yeah, you have it. Now, big breath in. Let it go. Bring your hands to heart center. Twist to the left. That's it. Now, hips lower than your heart. Bring your hips down two more inches. Lift up through your chest one more inch. That's it. Each breath down in your hips. Inhale, lift through your chest. This is it. Two more breaths. Yeah, you have it. And on your last one, inhale, reach up to your pose. And exhale, fold. You can bring your feet out wide. Tuck your palms underneath your hands. I like to really get my palms tucked here so that your toes are actually up by your wrists. You can give your hands a little massage by making your weight move from your big toe out to your pinky toe and then back. Just back and forth like that. Crow. How do your mat crow pose? See if you can hug your front ribs in and use your exhales to engage that low belly, just like we did at the beginning. Yeah, that's it, Carolyn. For five, four, yes, Sarah, three, two, one. Chaturanga. Upward facing dog when you breathe in. Downward facing dog on your exhale. Take a nice big breath in. Blow the air out and now move feet to hands. Halfway lift, breathe in. Forward fold. One vertebrae at a time. Roll all the way up to standing and take eagle. Right arm wraps under, right leg wraps over top. Keep this pose simple. Place your gaze to one point where you're going to put your attention and then breathe. Like that, let that be the whole pose. Whether you're falling out of the pose or you're staying still like a statue, let that be the only purpose is just eyesight and breath. Once you've got that, swap sides. Bring your left arm under, left leg over. See if you can keep the same drishti point, bringing your eyes back to at least generally the same zone. Choose something that's not moving though. Breathing. That's the whole pose. Step out, right arm under, right leg over. We're gonna go a little bit shorter in this one. So get to it, right arm under, right leg over. The magic of the pose happens in the pose. Two breaths. One more time and switch. Left arm under, left leg over, last of the eagle poses. Here it is, just breathing. Inhale and step out. We're going to take right side standing leg raise. So grab your right knee or really try to go for your toes. If you're not able to reach your toes, always you can use a strap here. 
And the reason why I say that is because I just like the engagement that it brings to your core if you add a little more difficulty by bringing your leg out further. Leg to the right, eyes to the left. Oh, yes. Let it be breath and eyesight, whether you're in the pose or you're currently falling out of the pose. Just that. Legs and eyes back to center. Bring your hands onto the back sides of your hips. So it's going to sit flat. Hands on both sides of your pelvis and press back for airplane. So I do these little arms because it makes it really e easy to see and feel in your body when your right hip is up way higher than your left one. See if you can dial your hip point down so that it's staring right at the ground below you and your arms are even. Uh, so Carolyn, can you bring your left hip down a little bit more? Yeah, that's it, Sarah, like one or two more inches. Ariana, good job. Flex your back foot. <laughs> okay, now half moon. So you get your hips even and then you immediately move to the opposite of that. I love yoga, right? Now, flex your top foot and raise it into your, the air. What I discovered in my body yesterday is that when my foot's hanging down, that's when my top side feels like it's stretching. But if I'm really engaging and lifting that top foot high, all right, fold, both feet down. But for real though, when you're in half moon, we'll see it on the next side. If your foot, whoop, I'm gonna fall over, I was not prepared for this. When your foot is laying down, so it's sloping downwards, I can feel this big stretch in my side. And that's how I know I'm really not engaging my hip or my back leg. Because when I bring my foot up, this side body is actually doing the work of holding it up. So it's not a stretch feeling, it's an engagement feeling. And I can also feel it up here in my hip as well. See if you can find that on the next side. I know, we're doing standing leg raise on the left. So I'll remind you when we get back to half moon about that. So grab your left knee or go for your left toes. Flex that raised foot. Leg to the left, eyes to the right. That's it. Reach out through your right fingertips. Legs and eyes to center. If you have this, press back for airplane, letting your fingertips come right on top of your hips. Let your left hip drop down this time so that you're keeping your pelvis neutral. Yeah, Angela, you've got it right there. All right, now half moon. Right hand down, left hand up. Let's go for the default first. So drop your foot two inches down. Feel the stretch happening in your side body, like all that length. And now pick your foot four inches up. Do you feel the way that your side body engages differently? Drop the top foot down two inches. Oh yeah, go down this time. Now on your inhale, bring it back up. Do you feel that in your side body? There you go. All right, forward fold, that's it. It's just about finding one thing that's interesting in the pulse. Press your feet into the mat, inhale, roll all the way up to standing, and we're gonna take one side of dancer. So right hand back to your inner ankle, left hand forwards. See if you can press out to the edge of the pulse. And switch sides. Left side dancer, left hand back, right hand forwards. Set your gaze and then just breathe. Inhale, step out on your exhale. You can shake your legs around, 
let's take tree pulse. Right side tree, foot at your ankle, your shin, or all the way up at your thigh. Swap sides. Left side tree pulse. Last one of all of equanimity, all of the balancing series. Let it be about your gaze and your breath. Yeah, whether or not you're wiggling or staying in the pose, you have this. All right, bring your feet down to the mat. Walk all the way up to the head of it. Inhale, extended mountain reach. Exhale and fold. Breathe in, halfway lift. Chaturanga, blow the air back out. Upward facing dog, inhale. Down dog on your exhale, take right side triangle. Yes, right foot all the way forwards. Yeah, good, show. good adjustment there, Nancy. Think about creating long side bodies in this pose. Just find one thing that could be interesting about reaching up from your hips all the way up through your armpits and your shoulders to get as much length on the side of your body as possible. Like let that be the one interesting thing that you're looking at in this pose. Just reaching out as far as you can. How does that feel in your bones and in your body? On your inhale, rise up to stand. Take side facing, wide legged forward fold. On each exhale, see if you can't fold a little bit deeper. For those of you with a bind, bring some softness to your elbows. Yes, I don't like being told to soften my elbows either. It is good for you, though. Let your head drop down. Last breath. On your inhale, rise up to standing. Take namaste, front facing, forward fold, and fold all the way down. So yesterday, I discovered that I was teaching this pose wrong, which was really fun. I was like, oh, shoot, we're allowed to do that? I always say feet on railroad tracks, so they're facing right in front of you. As it turns out, you can face your back foot as far out to the side as you want. And it's actually not really going to impact the stretch on your front leg you can find almost a different stretch, one that's still good, still deep, but just different feeling by turning your back foot out. Let's take twisting triangle, left hand down, right hand out to the side. Pull your right hip backwards. This whole pose is just a game of making sure that this right hip is pulling back so that it's in line with your left one. When you get that right hip really fully engaged, it's going to deepen the stretch in your front leg. So see if you can pull it back just one more inch. And on your exhale, bring both hands down to the ground, chaturanga. Move through, upward facing dog with a breath in. Exhale to downward facing dog, and we'll take left side triangle. So you may or may not know this, but being an instructor is really just about taking the things that you're curious about in your own practice and then helping and letting your students discover that on their mat as well. So really what I've been looking at lately in this pose 
is dragging my front foot out even a little bit further than what I feel comfortable with and paying attention to my big toes, just pressing them down into the mat, seeing if I can engage my feet and my legs better, feel more secure in this pose so that it's a little bit easier to reach up, find a back bend, whatever else I want to do. But it's really just all about your feet and pressing down through those big toes. On your inhale, rise all the way up to standing and take side facing, wide legged, forward fold. Now you can go for the ninja lunges here, a bind, just staying still and getting as low as you can. I mean, there are lots of options in this pose, and I don't like being told what to do here. <laughs> so feel free to go ahead and take whichever version of this pose it's going to work for you. What I want you to look at is that your big toes are facing just in towards your face. It can be by one centimeter or really so that they're pointed in, but face your big toes inside and let the outer edges of your legs stretch. Get all that you can out of this fold. And on your next breath in, we're gonna rise up and take namaste, front facing, forward fold. Front foot faces forwards, back foot can apparently do whatever it wants. So, fold down. I really just couldn't believe it. I've been teaching feet on 12 o'clock my whole entire life. I personally did that on my mat my whole entire life. That's it. Now, everybody, see if you can draw your left hip backwards two more inches. Really pressing your sits bones back towards the far end of your mat. Take twisting triangle. Right hand down, left hand out to the side. That's it. Pressing back through your left hip. Get all the length of the backside of your leg. On your next exhale, both hands down, chaturanga. Move through up dog with a breath in, into downward facing dog, exhale. Roll all the way out into a high plank. Come down onto the floor. Take your pointer fingers, your middle finger and your pointer finger, and slip them right behind your head. So that groove where your the base of your skull meets your neck, rest your pointer fingers here. Now, I'm not gonna ask you to lift your arms up in this. You can choose to do that if you'd like. Lift up into locust pose just enough so that your fingertips are helping keeping your head long and your chin tucked. So you wanna feel like you're pressing your fingertips up into your skull, that's it, for five. Four, pressing down to lift up. Three, two, one. Come all the way back down onto your mat. You can wiggle your feet left and right. And then we're going to go floor bow. Let's do half bow today. I've been loving this. So bring your right hand out in front of you. We're going to reach back with the left hand first. So it's right in front of you in this L shape, grabbing for the outer edge of your ankle foot flexed, press backwards. So this is half floor bow. Now we're gonna turn this pose up by one notch by reaching your right hand out in front of you. Tent your fingertips. Now if you wanna take this pose up one more notch, you're gonna lift your front hand up and lift your back foot up off the ground for this like half floor bow, super yogi kind of thing. For five, four, three, Two, one, back down. You can shift your legs left and right. Half bow on the opposite side. So your left arm starts out in front of you. Right foot to the outside of your ankle. Flex your leg. Reach backwards. Round one. Turn it up for round two if you'd like. And then last one, reaching your arm and leg up for five, four, three, two, one. Come all the way onto the mat and we'll take upward facing dog. Hands by your low ribs and lift. 
Take a nice big breath in. On your exhale, bring your knees down. Let's do one set of camel. So toes tucked under. Hands where your back pockets would be. So what you want to do in this pose is make sure that you're pressing down and out through your hands, down here at your hips, not up at your low back. This is going to cause pinching. This is going to cause lifting. So pressing down, lift up through your shoulders in the center of your chest. Just see if you can engage the front side of your body here. Not working, worrying so much about the back bend, but about supporting the back bend with your core. Front ribs hug to center. Think about lifting your low belly up and in. Your next breath in, roll all the way up. Take downward facing dog. I love this counter stretch and down dog. Really press your sits bones up and back. Let your chest drop down to the floor. Take a nice big breath in. On your exhale, jump through to a seated position. Yep, roll all the way onto the floor. We'll take bridge pose round one. Lay all the way down. Ready? Legs engaged. Bridge pose round one. Press down. Lift up. Inhale. This is it. Front ribs hug into center. Low belly hugs up and in to support the pose. Take a breath and then come back down. Knees side to side. Now, no matter if you're going up for wheel or not, come into bridge pose. Now reach your hands straight up to the ceiling. From here, flex your wrists so that your palms are reaching up to the ceiling. And now bend your elbows to tuck your hands right behind your shoulders. Again, you can use this either to go up into wheel or just to stay here and bridge. But are you ready? Set, press down, lift up, inhale. Yogi go, bridge your wheel, round one for three, two, one. Tuck your chins and come back down. Inhale on the mat. Yes, yogis. Exhale, press down, lift up. Let's move, bridge your wheel, round two for three, two, one. Tuck your chin and come back down. All right, Nancy, how many more of these are we doing? We're doing four more? Okay, here we go. Ready, set, press down, lift up, inhale, three, two, one. Exhale, come back down. Inhale, exhale, press, lift, move, let's go. For three, two, one. Tuck your chin and come back down. Halfway there, yogis. Inhale, exhale that's four press down lift up let's go listen i thought you said four more three two one tuck your chin and come back down one more time inhale exhale press down lift up let's move yogis go three two one tuck your chin and come down take supta baddha konasana listen you're gonna have to be very specific i am allowed to take my own interpretation <laughs> I mean, I guess you guys can take your own interpretations, too. <sighs> Big breaths here. Clear all that air out. Take a moment to acknowledge the body that's shown up for you today in whichever way. The ways that you're feeling awesome about. The ways that you're like, what the hell is going on here? All of the ways. Take happy baby. Hands by the outer edges of your feet or right behind your knees. Rock right to left. Bring your feet down to like bridge pose feet. So they're really close to your bum, tucked in. Now lift up into a little half bridge. Hug the front of your pelvis up so that you can lay your hips back down onto the mat so that your spine from your ribs all the way down to your sits bones are on the mat. That's gonna be the really key piece here, getting your ribs 
down to your hips, pressing onto the mat. This is your whole lower back. Now from here, lift your knees up to 90 degrees. Up so your shins are parallel to the mat. Now reach your fingertips up towards your heels so you're looking at them. And this might be it. This might be the pose for you and you just stay here. If you want to tone this up a little bit, on your exhale, lower your heels. Now you can come the whole way down where they tap the floor and then come back up. Or it's just a little movement bringing them halfway down. Whatever it looks like, start moving. Exhale, heels come down. Inhale, back up. Sorry, that's actually the wrong way. Inhale, heels down. Exhale, heels back up. Inhale, heels down. Exhale, heels back up. Looking for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. That's it. Heels down, yogis. Now lift up into bridge pulse right from here. Keeping your feet exactly where they are. Extend your right leg out. So it's just straight out in front of you, keeping your right hip down. Take a nice big breath in. Exhale and switch sides. Left leg extends out. Straight out in front of you. Exhale and switch sides. Leg out. Exhale and switch. Leg out. Exhale and switch. Last round. Leg out. Exhale. Switch. Last one. And bring your hips back down to the mat. Fingertips behind your ears. Let's go for yogi bicycles. Whole lower back down for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Yes, that's it, yogis. Hug your knees into your chest and rock head to toe. Hey, Philomena, we're going to do boat pose. How many seconds should we hold it? Are you ready? Rock all the way up and down. Five. Let's go. Boat pulse, legs out wide, fingertips out wide. Inhale, five, four, three, two, one. Hug your knees into your chest and rock. We're going to make our way the whole way to downward facing dog and take right side, half pigeon. Right knee out using a prop or a block underneath of your right hip. If you notice that you want to sit onto your right side. So if you were going to take the bird's eye view of this pose, like right over top of it, you would see that your body is sitting right over center line. Not leaning out to the right side or leaning out to the left side, but right over center. The props that you use in this pose, whether or not it's a block, some of you might not need a block, that's too much adjustment. A rolled up hand towel can also be just the right amount of lift to make sure that you're staying over center line. Bye, Carolyn. Big breath here. And then switch. Take left side half pigeon. Left leg out, right leg tucks. Let yourself feel the pose. Like what's actually going on here? Let yourself feel the sensations and the feedback that your body gives you about every little bit of this pose from your toes all the way to your head. Just take a look to see what's there and what's going on. You're ready. Take a breath in. Let it go. 
Bring your weight on to your right hip. Swing your left leg around. And we'll take right side seated single leg extension. So right leg out, left leg in. Inhale, fingertips up. Exhale, fold down towards your toes. Making sure that your right pinky toe is pulling back towards your face. Bye, Nancy. Take a breath in. Let it go. And switch sides. Left leg out. Right leg tucks. Inhale, fingertips up. Exhale and fold. Take one more breath in and out. Reach both legs out in front of you. Inhale, fingertips up. Exhale, final one. Fold all the way down towards your toes, making sure that your pinky toes are engaged and pulling back towards your face. On your next breath in, roll up and take tabletop or reverse plank here. Pressing down through your heels, lifting through your hips and letting your head drop backwards. Take a nice big breath in. Blow the air out to come all the way onto your mat. Let's take a quick fish pose. Fingertips tucked underneath of you. Lean back into your hands and let your head drop backwards. Sometimes fish pose is just really what my body's craving and I like to stay here. So it's your choice. Either stay in fish or rock off to the right side. And we'll get upside down in our final inversions, which means a head or handstand, shoulder stand, or waterfall. That's it, Sarah. Listen, I really like the way you wave your feet in the air. It does work sometimes when you're like, oh, I just, I need to pay a little bit more attention here. <laughs> I think that's a totally fair sentiment. If you don't want to flip over onto your back, sometimes it's definitely better that way. <laughs> you got it. All right, when everyone is ready, make your way back down onto your mat, however that looks. Hug your knees up into your chest. Let them drop to the left side. Eyes over your right shoulder for supine twist. Hug your knees up into your chest. Legs to the right, eyes to the left. One last time, knees up, legs out, Shavasana.
Take a breath in and let it go. Bring some movement to your fingers and your toes. When you're ready, hug your knees up into your chest and rock onto your right side, placing your forehead on the floor or otherwise on your arm. Rise up into a seated position. On your inhale, reach your fingertips up. And on your exhale, drop your hands down to heart center. Take a breath in. Um. Bring your thumb knuckles up to forehead center. Together, we bow our heads and we say, Namaste. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Have a great day. Thank you for coming in for class this morning, whether that's in studio, online, at home. Hello. Good morning, Lisa. Thanks for coming and practicing with us. Minnie, good to see you. You too, Philomena. Bye, guys. I know. I love the TV. It's so much better when, like, to get to engage with everybody at home. <laughs> oh. Pass messages through me to those at home. The mic.